I want to talk just about this amazing time, uh, this complex time uh, that we've been through and uh, the opportunity to really think through this idea of collective genius. And collective genius, of course, includes the digital transformations. What I'm going to focus on a bit more is about how to include more people uh, with this digital transformation and give some examples of that. I'm going to move relatively quickly through a lot of different images and we can touch on some of those and, and come back to them in the conversation later. But the first thing I start with is just, we did a, an event when I was USCTO with President Obama, he hosted this Frontiers Conference. And I like to think about these topics because there's so much technology and capability around us and so many problems to address. And so many of you are working on many different facets of this. And so this idea of personal frontiers, personalized medicine, personalized learning, local frontiers, this idea of smart cities, wise communities, capabilities that we can have kind of where we feel are physically regionally. Um, our national frontiers, countries in this particular instance, we looked at our national AI strategies, global frontiers, certainly climate change, our shift to green energy opportunities, keeping our oceans healthy. So many sort of commercial and inclusive, you know, philanthropic, governmental, civic tech opportunities there. Mm -hmm. And then this idea of uh, interplanetary, and we've seen certainly a lot of movement this, this July with the commercialization of space, um, and then uh, uh, and also with continuing the mission from the governmental leaders like NASA and others, and the international cooperation on kind of continuing to explore. The thing that I really wanted to check in on with everybody is the use of data analytics and the ability to include a lot more of humanity into that. And I'd note this interesting uh, kind of sobering quote from the Dalai Lama about people's fear of being unneeded and also the challenges that we're facing in the digital world specifically, um, where we've crossed some boundaries, trying to pull back from them around this idea of weapons of math destruction, disinclusion of people. One of the greatest uh, uh, examples of that is of course, face recognition, the imbalance across race, gender, age. Uh, we can really recognize certain people at like a 99% recognition rate and other people 70% young, uh, women of color, for example. So the Algorithmic Justice League is working on things like that. So I bring two places in the desert. The upper one is Burning Man. The lower one is the Zatari refugee camp uh, in, in uh, Northern Jordan border uh, near Syria. These are two places in the desert that are similar size and similar budget. And yet we're using you know, one born out of joy, one born out of great sadness and tragedy. But we're using really old systems in one and new systems in other. We have assumed talent in the upper one. So how do we change our systems? You know, people are, have kindness, but systems can be cruel. How do we change them? How do we think that in our companies to evolve, to leverage all of the talent to have an inclusive future? And so we look at the sustainable development goals. We're thinking about them today, you know, with, with the EPRI, with the, the Formula E racing, you know, getting to uh, cleaner energies there, but poverty, uh, climate change, inclusive um, growth for everybody. And I wanted to share that we actually called out two entrepreneurs across the world, whether they were social, environmental, others, ec uh, economic, government, and said, who's already working on these SDGs? And we received over uh, the final year, we've done it five years, 1,400 submissions from 141 countries in three weeks of people already solving. So how do we venture catalyze all of them? Some will be commercial for venture capital, others can come through government. You know, here's a team in the bottom corner flying drones to plant a billion trees a year. A team in Uganda teaching law in prison because people weren't able to have representation. They can get themselves out of prison and people are doing that. The one in the bottom corner is a floating fabrication lab, like a maker space, fab lab, much like the shop we were just in uh, with the e-cars. So this is an idea for the Amazon, instead of the cut the tree job down job and deforestation, People who are living there can in be included in finding things like Moderna vaccines and other things, uh, solution making and inclusion. So these are examples of entrepreneurs we hosted. The one in the middle, Bernice, has, is from Ghana, the bamboo bicycle company. Um, here's a picture from Boise, Idaho. So somewhere around the world, there's like this group or layer of people who are innovating and getting together. These are tech meetups. President Obama was going to Boise and uh, we wondered how many, one of them has 800 people in it, yet many neighbors don't know. You know, we haven't heard about the internet camps and boot camps in Gaza, in Afghanistan, but they are there. So how do we community organize to notice all of this energy? These are tech meetups all around the world. These are fab labs all around the world. Think of a library, but it's a place to go make things in a shop. 
um, to solve problems. Native American innovators, we work on this with MIT Solve. Uh, on reservations, which are some of the poorest counties in the country, island innovators facing much climate challenge. So all around our world, women innovators with vital voices, these were the tech meetup organizers from across the United States. And we pulled them together um, to meet each other and really community organizing innovation, which you can do in your companies and across your supplier teams with these kinds of sprints and upgrades and fellows and cross mixing. Did that in government with tech folks on analytics on new kinds of ways. This is the US Census with the Opportunity Project, which is an idea of getting more apps for things like foster care or school lunch in addition to self-driving cars. So really expanding what we think, this is hack the pay gap. We have intractable pay gap, but we can have, there's an app for that. So this is Grace, she's in 10th grade. She's teaching the police chief in New Orleans how to code. We were looking on data-driven justice, police data initiative. And so I'll end with these a couple images about inclusion, which are uh, these young kids in the science fair at the White House. Here they are telling the president about a page turning robot that they made. And he asked them, how did you do this? And they said, we had a brainstorming. And he laughed and he said, then what did you do? We built some prototypes, which is exactly what the e-racing team did. So can we have all of our kindergartners, in addition to the arts projects and the language projects and their tech projects, can they work together, wear capes, have fun, be in team, be celebrated, and really solve problems in the world. But we have in balance, this is an image of uh, 2000 films and it's men's voices to women's voices, who gets to speak in the lines. So we have to remember that this unconscious bias is all around us. And we have to know that there really were 13 women astronauts just with the seven Mercury astronauts. We saw Wally Funk go up, you know, that there really were uh, many people throughout history, including Ada Lovelace who invented algorithms at the time of Darwin. You know, she has fabulous hair. Um, Ida B. Wells, who was the Black, Black Lives Matter data scientist of the 1800s who won the Pulitzer Prize last year. And uh, final two images, this is the Wright brothers with their sister, Catherine. It was really the family right that took us to space or to, to flying. And uh, we need to think about everyone. There really were four women in space, including two women of color. So I'll end there with sort of those images and not thinking about how do we use what the GenPAC team is sharing this data and innovation together with all of us and make sure everybody's in the uh, inclusive future so that we can really get a champion our companies into what they really can be and can deliver for the world.